Hi, I am Dr. Paul Zong, and it is my utmost pleasure to welcome you all to this enlightening session today. Together, we will embark on a journey to explore a fascinating and vital topic, the role of high-dose vitamin C in cancer treatments. Cancer remains one of the most challenging diseases of our time, affecting millions of lives worldwide. As medical professionals and researchers, it is our duty to continuously seek new and innovative approaches to improve cancer treatments and enhance the quality of life for those affected by this formidable illness. Today, I'm excited to dive deeper into the intriguing world of high-dose vitamin C and its potential impact on cancer therapy. You will see, vitamin C, beyond its well-known role as an essential nutrient, has sparked considerable interest in the medical community for its possible therapeutic effects in combating cancer. Renowned scientist Linus Pauling, a Nobel laureate on two occasions, was widely regarded as a significant figure in discovering the role of vitamin C in cancer. His groundbreaking contributions propelled the understanding of vitamin C's potential therapeutic effects in combating cancer. Additionally, Dr. David Goldie, a distinguished medical oncologist and the physician-in-chief of the Memorial Sloan Kettering Cancer Center in New York, emerged as one of the pioneering researchers, exploring the relationship between vitamin C and its impact on cancer and leukemia. His valuable research significantly advanced our knowledge in this field. During the 1970s and 1980s, a series of studies conducted by Linus Pauling, Ewan Cameron, and their colleagues shed light on the potential benefits of administering large doses of vitamin C for cancer patients. The researchers found that infusing 10 grams of vitamin C intravenously daily for 10 days, followed by a maintenance dose of at least 10 grams orally, could potentially extend the survival time and enhance the overall quality of life for individuals with advanced stage cancer. However, the effectiveness of vitamin C in cancer treatment became a subject of controversy, prompting further investigations into the critical factor of its administration route. It was recognized that the route through which vitamin C is administered plays a crucial role in its efficacy. Comparisons between orally administered vitamin C and intravenous administration revealed significant differences. Intravenous administration of vitamin C resulted in plasma concentrations that were 30 to 70 times higher than those achieved through oral administration. These higher plasma concentrations attained via intravenous administration were found to be similar to levels that exhibited toxicity to cancer cells in laboratory cultures. When exploring the mechanism of how vitamin C eliminates cancer cells, it's crucial to consider its three distinct forms, ascorbate, neutral, ascorbic acid, reduced, and dehydroascorbic acid, DHA, oxidized. Remarkably, all three forms have the ability to convert between each other both inside and outside the cells. This transformation process leads to the production of hydrogen peroxide, H2O2, a reactive oxygen species or, ROS. Of special significance is DHA, which can traverse cellular membranes using the GLUT1 receptor. In contrast, ascorbic acid enters cells through the SVCT receptor. As a result of the ROS generated by vitamin C, cancerous cells undergo either apoptosis or ferroptosis in the presence of cellular iron. Over the past decade, clinical trials have extensively investigated the benefits of intravenous vitamin C infusion in cancer treatment, yielding varying degrees of success. The commonly employed doses include sodium ascorbate at 50 grams, 75 grams, and a maximum of 100 grams per infusion. These infusions are typically administered three times per week over an eight-week period, with each infusion lasting for approximately one to three hours. Subsequently, maintenance doses are usually given once per week. It is important to note that glutathione should not be added to vitamin C infusions, as per the recommended protocol. I would like to share with you the findings of the recent and substantial vitality trial, which represents one of the largest phase 3 studies, investigating the role of vitamin C in cancer treatment. Prior to this trial, numerous early phase clinical trials had already been conducted in the field of cancer research. The vitality trial was a randomized, open-label, multicenter study conducted in patients with metastatic colorectal cancer. A total of 442 patients were recruited for this trial. The experimental group received high-dose vitamin C, administered intravenously at a dose of 1.5 grams for every kilogram of body weight for three hours over three days, in addition to Fofox chemotherapy. The control group, on the other hand, solely received Fofox chemotherapy. Although the progression-free survival, P53, 
PFS, of the experimental group did not demonstrate superiority over the control group as a whole, a noteworthy finding emerged from the pre-specified subgroup analyses. Specifically, patients with RAS mutation exhibited significantly longer PFS, when high-dose vitamin C was added to their chemotherapy regimen, compared to those receiving chemotherapy alone. The median PFS for patients with vitamin C added to chemotherapy was 9.2 months, while it was 7.8 months for those on chemotherapy alone. In conclusion, the combination of high-dose vitamin C with chemotherapy, appears to hold potential benefits for patients with metastatic colorectal cancer harboring RAS mutation. Numerous cases of vitamin C infusion have been administered to cancer patients, and the majority of studies have demonstrated an excellent safety profile with minimal side effects. It is worth noting, however, that while severe side effects are rare, they can occur. Specifically, there have been reports of 20 cases of kidney failure associated with high-dose vitamin C administration. To ensure safe usage, it is crucial to receive high-dose vitamin C in a qualified clinical setting under the close monitoring of kidney functions. This precautionary measure allows healthcare professionals to carefully assess and manage any potential risks, thus minimizing the likelihood of adverse outcomes. The information, including but not limited to, text, graphics, images, and other material contained in this presentation, is provided for informational purposes only. None of the material is intended to be a substitute for professional medical advice, diagnosis, or treatment. Always seek the advice of your physician or other qualified health care provider with any questions you may have regarding a medical condition or treatment and before undertaking a new health care regimen. Never disregard professional medical advice or delay in seeking it because of something you have read or heard on this presentation. Omega Precision Oncology at the Institute of Integrative Bio-Oncology acknowledges and respects the intellectual property rights of others. We make use of copyrighted materials, such as pictures and tables for educational, research, commentary, criticism, and transformative purposes. The materials used are factual and informational, not for commercial gain, and only a reasonable portion necessary to convey the intended message is utilized. Our use of copyrighted materials is not expected to negatively impact the market value or potential for sales or distribution of the original work. While we strive to provide attribution to content creators, complete attribution may not always be possible due to platform limitations. We believe our use falls within fair use as defined by U.S. copyright laws. If you are a copyright holder and believe your work has been used inappropriately, please contact us so that we can address your concerns promptly.